every single one of us has a role in building the Africa we want. By 2050, our population will cross the 2 billion mark. By 2025, a quarter of all young persons will be African. Energetic, creative, they must be appropriately empowered. The major challenges facing the African continent, food and nutrition insecurity. It's always been a narrative about poverty, a narrative of hunger. It makes no sense to me because in Africa, you know, you throw up anything before it hits the ground, it grows. And Africa should not be growing poverty. Africa should be growing wealth. Ça c'est donc l'outil lui-même. Mais il faut la main qui utilise que la main soit la plus performante, c'est-à-dire qu'elle soit bien formée. You really cannot grow agriculture unless you have force-rate mines. Rue Forum, a network of African universities, has dedicated itself to growing first-rate mines to meet Africa's challenge of developing a vibrant agricultural sector for the future. This year, we are celebrating the 10 years of Forum, reflecting back, but we're also thinking about the future. We never had this kind of a vision of growth. So I was happy that some of the dream people who really had the foresight to look at the crisis, to look at the role that African universities need to play are here. The meeting also brought together Rue Forum supported students and showcased their collaborative research with smallholder farmers. This network will give us really to access technologies generated somewhere in Africa that can be just adapted uh, to our own situation. You just, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. We started being eight universities, and now we have 42 universities, you know, in a space of 10 years. It illustrates the power of networking, recognizing a challenge that agriculture wasn't where it should be. I think you could consider three periods historically for African universities. The first period was after independence for most of these countries. The university really had a, a cadre of, of excellence, reasonably well-resourced institutions. In the 70s, this began to fall apart. It was a time of widespread political turmoil. Students were frustrated with universities as ivory towers, that failed to contribute to Africa's development. These and other factors ushered in a long period of decline for African universities. I'm inspired by the group Joyce Mook, Bharati Patel, uh, Malcolm Blackie, Professor David Ngugi, they started investing in revitalizing the school faculties of agriculture. Joy said, we've got to get more young people into development. The small group of visionaries was convinced that with support, universities could become agents of change. For me, the first time I came back this road, after many years, including political turbulence, was in 1993 after I'd finished my PhD study in the U.S. at Ohio State University. I had got money from the Rockefeller Foundation. I wanted to do research, but like many of us, we thought that the best research you could do was just within the university labs. That's when they introduced Nora to me. This time, let me say, nice meeting you. <laughs> Thank you. Just as researchers needed to connect with communities to make their research more relevant, innovative farmers like Nora Ebukalen, a founding member of the Popular Knowledge Women's Initiative, known as PICWI, were hungry for knowledge that could help them feed their families in the aftermath of conflict. 
we went through a period of close to eight years of civil strife here. It was frightening. I have forgiven. When we came particularly here and listened to the stories of these women, it was more than an immediate bond. This was a group we wanted to work with. That place behind me is actually where we used to hide with most of the members who started the Pikwi as a group. When the time for insurgents came, men would run away and leave us women with their children. So I would climb with my children to the ground area and hide there. When you're holding the one on the breast, the other one would hold on you in a tight line to make sure that no noise comes out at that time. They hardly had any food. Their key crops had been devastated. They did not have it. Over the next five years, we were able to revive the growing of cowpeas and groundnuts. Following five years, we released some of the best varieties which we had developed together. Today, that is one of the most vibrant organizations. It is a community of more than 2,500 households. They now have their own community agents. They are now the attraction of several researchers, not only from Uganda, but globally. This way, the, some of the founder members of, of Piqui. Of course, they have since aged, since we met over 20 years ago. <laughs> the main output is that universities needed to become learners. We had been with the forum since 1992. It was now 2003 that it, it was time for, for it to go to a next stage. So the vice chancellors came together and then say, we shall run this, not as a forum, but we now call it Regional Universities Forum for Capacity Building in Agriculture. Today we are in Makerere. We are located in a university which was created more than 100 years ago. The Uganda government offered us a space, and this is the building. It's a simple, humble building, but I think it's what we do in those buildings that is more important than the size of this building. Uh, Ruforum is, uh, is a small secretariat, but that around it a network of individuals that are in the African universities, over 19, 20,000 people, that are focused on seeing how together they might be able to change universities for the better. To me, the initial mission was a very simple one. How do we turn this into something that would make African universities proud and start dreaming about the future role of African universities? This dream is being realized in the stories of hundreds of young researchers whose work Rue Forum is supporting. Soil scientist Abigail Otinga is one of them. I grew up in a small village in the very remote areas of Western Kenya, in the district of Bungoma. As I grew up, I really wanted to go to the university and get a good job and provide a better life for my mother and my siblings. Of course, my mother always used to constantly tell me, you have to study hard, you have to go to the university, you have to get a good job. We are at Mendo Primary School. This is where I began my education when I was a little girl. If there were not enough classes, we sat under a tree and we were very happy. <laughs> like every other child, you'll have to go home for lunch. If you are lucky, you'll have a sweet potato waiting for you at home. That would be a very lucky day. So they squeeze little, little, little kids, four of them, and a little writing space, little writing space. When I got accepted at the university, it was uh, the best, the best feeling in my life. I was not so sure where the fees would come from, but I knew somehow I'll get there. The grants are a mechanism uh, by which the forum uh, plays out its role. You could say that they are the flagship 
of the forum interventions at member universities. We wrote a proposal, so I got the scholarship from Rural Forum for my master's. Wow, it was something out of the... <laughs> it, was, it, was really, it was really exciting because now I get a grant that covers everything. So this is my lab, soil science lab. Yeah, have you seen that? Abigail got her PhD and is now a lecturer at the University of Eldoret. She is part of a research group helping take Rue Forum's dream to the next level with a community action research project to strengthen three farmer associations. Western Kenya is known as the food basket of the country, but low soil fertility has been reducing farmers' yields. And right now we're on a trip to Ngoma to visit one of the farmer associations named Busfo. Doctor. Yes, Pa. How are you? I'm very fine, thank you. How are you? Jambo, Shana. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. My name is Bonfaso Malwa. I'm the chairman of uh, Bungoma Small Scale Farmers Forum. We have 1,230 farmers. The idea was, what can we do to improve on adoption rate of our technologies? Odi! When we take <laughs> soil samples, the next time they see us, they want to know what are the results of those soil samples and what do those results mean? Apart from improving the soil, they now actually have the technologies they now know collectively how to produce for larger markets. One year I planted soya. I didn't expect such amount. I paid school fees for my son. I'm proud of that. So if you look at it, 204, setting up the institution. 205, launching our strategic plan. And then 2009, broadening the funding base of the forum, bringing on board the Gates Foundation. In this case, it was very persuading and very clear that this is a worthwhile investment. And Professor Adipara's passion for this space is, is incredible. The Nepad Regional Fish Node at Bunda College has launched a program aimed at empowering rural farmers in the country to embrace inland fish farming as a viable business. The Community Action Research Program Fish Project is being funded by African Regional Universities Forum for capacity building in agriculture. You know, Malawi is a, a fish eating country. Why? It's because fish uh, is one of the key commodities in Malawi. The human population growth over two, three decades has grown from about 6 million to about 14, 15 million people. Some of the species have actually disappeared because of overfishing. I realized that aquaculture uh, is the only solution to declining catches, but much more the consumption of fish per person, which has decreased so much. My name is Msekiwa Matsimbe. I'm an aquaculture and fishery scientist. I have to make a difference through aquaculture and fisheries. That's my biggest dream. We are going to Mavuere village in Doha. Banja in on the and the May Massi. You must have got a bass in him, Zango Banti, my meaning. Eme Moyo, Monka would love you for my Vinda Minute with the Madam, and you made a little to see a Nisa. The students that are involved in the CAP, there are two in master's program, and the third student is a PhD student who is doing organization development. We mainly focused on capacity building of the farmers. We trained them in hatchery management, on the general biology, pond management, teaching them how they can work in a group, how it is beneficial. 
Tumanga would die or Sangalala. If you went down, I would never be willing to watch you would be able to call. Now, they're aware that fish farming should be taken as a business, and they are aware that fish is profitable. Roof Forum's grant has had a ripple effect. Luana is the NEPA designated center of excellence for fisheries and aquaculture research for the region. So that's a big bang. To be known as an African center is not, not small. The project has also been a catalyst for new international collaborations, including those with Chinese and British researchers to develop low-cost fish feeds. No Technologies that transform people's lives haven't just come out of the universities. They are also developed in the National Research Institutes, and one of Roof Forum's key contributions has been to train scientists who populate these institutions. NACRI in Uganda is one of many national research institutes that has been revitalized by Roof Forum's support. Robert Kawuki is a young scientist who came and joined the Cassava program. Today is one of those leading a $3 million grant. We have over 20 million people in Uganda who primarily depend on cassava. And it's here that we come up with solutions to many of the challenges that farmers face with their crops. The major work that we're doing on transformation is mainly for one of the viruses that is a problem in cassava, and that is the cassava brown streak virus disease. And actually in the field we have some of these transgenic plants under evaluation. You see how a combination of strategic investment in human capital has supported the strengthening of a research institution from just merely being a national research institution into a regional center of excellence. The favorite part of being out here is seeing diversity and also feeling nature. My vision that I have for cassava is to shift its importance more from being a purely subsistence crop to a crop that can be highly commercialized. The great thing really has been, you know, with some of the instability that we have had in Africa, Roo Forum has been able to literally, you know, lift by the hand, you know, and lead some of these institutions where we probably would not have had any institution. the university I had forgotten completely. When the nightmare happened, I was in this university doing my last year of undergraduate. I became afraid. I'm telling you, it was terrible. We fled to Congo. When I was Going into the Congo forest, I couldn't imagine I will be back in the country. There was nothing to eat in the forest. People were dying. I was hopeless. When we got back, I found my father and my mother, they were there, and they started to take care of me. I was very weak. So after the war and genocide, the university was empty. No lecturers, no students. Three of my classmates are still alive. Rwanda's agricultural research system had collapsed, and there was a desperate need for scientists to help rebuild the country. And I told myself, ah, me also, I should go for a master's degree. By September 
I entered the Makerere University and that's got the founding and the Ruforum coordination. Leonidas returned from Makerere University with a Master's in Agricultural Extension and Education. I was in charge of taking technologies to farmers. We are going in Gasharu village where we have a livestock IP innovation platform. An innovation platform is a way of bringing together the different actors around a particular agricultural commodity so that the entire value chain is more productive. Leonidas has established successful innovation platforms for maize, cassava, Irish potato, aquaculture and cattle across Rwanda. He has also established a dairy innovation platform. Now we are uh, going to one of the farmers Leonidas's work taps into the government's One Cow, One Family program, in which families pass on their cow to a neighboring family after it has calved, ensuring that every family has at least one cow. This is the cow who came in this household after having given three calves. That is the fourth calf. And when the fourth is going to grow up, the cow will move the leg once again. Once he gets the money from the milk, he can pay electricity. He can buy pigs like this one. With the money, he can pay university for his kids. Pigs. <laughs> we are almost there. Once a quarter, farmers, local leaders, milk cyclists, milk collection center representatives, traders, district veterinarians, and agronomists meet. They discuss issues and find out solutions. Working with the One Cow, One Family program, the innovation platform established by Leonidas has not only generated new opportunities for smallholder farmers, but has also helped to stitch a fragmented community back together. Even next year, the cows will be given. I am very full. Reform for me is like a saver. It saved me from where I was hopeless. And uh, with the master's degree I have got, I think even now I can go for a PhD. And the Reform could support. In the past 10 years, RUFORUM has trained well over 2,000 African postgraduate scientists, mobilized more than $60 million in resources, and developed more than 300 technologies that have reached more than a million farmers. These accomplishments were recognized at the meeting, and an MOU with the African Union was proposed to accelerate the momentum of the network. I listened very carefully to all the things you asked me to take to our heads of state and to the Commission, and I will faithfully do that on your behalf. So putting investments in a sector that carries the largest number of people and with the highest potential to move the largest number of people out of poverty makes a lot of sense. <laughs> What is the Africa that I want? Wow. Well, that's a very tough statement. My Africa is one which is confident. An Africa that is able to create jobs for its young people. I want an Africa that is self-sufficient to feed its population. The prosperous Africa. The Africa that we see that uh, we can use science to solve most of the problems. It's an Africa that's just see the opportunities are all there. I would like also to make sure that women are also not left behind in Africa. And that there would be less boundaries physically and virtually. And I, I would like Africans to say, oh, it's, it's great to be an African. It's now up to me. It's up to me. How exciting would it be to live in that Africa? 
And so you get motivated into putting your shoulder to the wheel and building the Africa you want in whatever corner you may be.